Okay, a very good morning to all of you. My name is Caleb. Um, welcome to Palm Sunday, everyone, and welcome to the kids. Let's encourage them. We're going to uh, start this morning off with a time of worship, but the kids are actually going to lead us, and so I'm going to hand over to them. And so, kids, over to you guys.
All right. Good job, kids. Let's encourage them. Yeah. So you guys can go find your parents, but you're going to stay here because we're actually going to invite the older kids to come up and they are going to perform for us. So little kids, you guys can come down. And if you are an older kid and you're not up here, you can come up. We're not going to dismiss any.
Sorry. Okay. Um, so we would like for the congregation to join us. They're going to lead us in these worship songs. Um, uh, they're pretty much a couple of them, um, maybe a, a newer song. Some are in between and some are real old. So they're great songs from years ago. Um, All hail the power of Jesus' name, crown them with many crowns. Um, when I survey, nope, I got the wrong sheet. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Crown him with many crowns on a hill far away. And who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Only a holy God.
right. You guys sounded amazing. That was awesome. Can we just... Uh, can we just stop and say a, bless a blessing over our children? So I know you're with some of them. And for these up here, we just want to pray a blessing over you guys, okay? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for our children. Um, we just bless them. And we pray that you, your face would shine on them and you would be gracious to them. We pray you'd open up um, their hearts, their minds, their eyes, Lord, that they would see you, they would behold you, that they would understand you, that their hearts would be impressed with a love for you. And so for those who are going off to classes, for those who are staying here and worshiping with us, um, we just pray that in the rest of our time, Lord, that all of our hearts would be drawn closer to you. And so we just thank you for this time you've given us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, kids, you guys can go and find your parents. I'm going to dismiss the kids in a moment. Um, I just, while they kind of find their way back to all of you, um, just wanted to give two quick announcements. Um, the first is while they head off there, and in a moment I'll dismiss you and we'll greet one another. Just two quick things happen in the life of the church. The first is that um, there is a women's retreat in April, um, and there should be a slide up on the screen behind me in a moment. But if you're new to JICC, um, or if you uh, uh, have ever come to a women's retreat, um, I hear they are incredible. I myself have never gone to a women's retreat. Uh, Yeah, so women's retreat, um, and then the second thing I just wanted to, to mention is the uh, visitor's lunch, and I'll tell you more about that uh, in a moment. Parents, you guys can now take your kids um, and uh, check them in um, for, I believe there are kids' packets in the lobby. I just want to check the exact age group. Um, so there's uh, K5 and below will go to childcare, and first to fifth grade are actually in the service today. And there are kids' packets for you. So if you're a first grader or a fifth grader or somewhere between those two, um, you're also welcome to go to the lobby now and actually get a packet um, through the, that you can use through the service. For the rest of us, um, we're going to greet while the, the parents check their kids in. Uh, so let's say hi and uh, meet someone new. Go for it.
Faith Church. As we stay in that spirit of joy and just gathering together, thanksgiving for one another, happy Palm Sunday. We are going to continue in a time of worship if you would like to stand. As we sing to this Lord who we say, Hosanna, God save us too. I want to read Psalm 118 or just a portion of it over us and then pray. But it says, open the gates of righteousness for me. I will enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the Lord's gate. The righteousness will enter through it or righteous will enter through it. I will give thanks to you because you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This came from the Lord. It is wondrous in our sight. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, save us. Lord, please grant us success. He who comes in the name of the Lord is blessed. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God and has given us light. Bind the festival sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Father, your faithful love endures forever. There was this great divide, this great chasm in my life, in all of our lives. But then Jesus, through Jesus, the cornerstone upon which our faith is built, we can be in your presence. And you look at us that was made from dust and you sent your son to come and to die on a cross so that we could be saved and then to rise again and to know that he is coming back. (laughs) And so on this day, we can rejoice and be glad because Jesus came and he died and he rose again. And Lord, he, we know he's coming back again. And so this is our great living hope that Jesus could be at the center of our lives as the great cornerstone, the steady foundation that we can build our lives on. He is our living and our active hope. So Father, this morning we praise your name. We sing a joyful song. We love you and we give you this time. Amen. Church, let's sing this together. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living Sing, who could imagine? Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. Come on. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. In Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Come on. Sing hallelujah. The one who set me free Hallelujah Death has lost its grip 
the promise your very body began to breathe and out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me come on church let's sing that again Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to break. And out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. And Jesus Let's sing that. And hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Sing that again. Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. And Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus, my Jesus, nothing else matters, and nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you, Jesus. You, Jesus, be the center of my life, and Jesus, be the center of my life. 
From beginning to the end It will always be It's always been you, Jesus My Jesus And nothing else matters And nothing in this world will do And Jesus, you're the same Nothing else matters Nothing in this world will do And Jesus, you're the center Everything revolves around you prayer for Jesus to be central in our lives. It's just there's anything competing for your attention and your affection. 
just anything that's taken preeminence in your life, would you just, just take a moment to confess that? God, we pray that you would be the center of our lives. We would love you with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. And so, Lord, forgive us for these places where we have not loved you with our whole heart, where we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. And we receive your forgiveness. We receive your life. And we pray as we go to the table of the Lord together, as as a church, Lord, we make it our prayer, what we just sang, that you would be the center of your church, that every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that Jesus is Lord. And so would you unify us at your table as we remember your sacrifice? Would you unify us, Lord, as we remember the fact that we are in this new covenant with you that is forever, it's eternal, and we thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you grab your communion elements? If you don't already have them, go ahead and grab them. And Milton's going to come lead us in communion. Actually, we're going to give it, um, go ahead, it's coming up. We're going to go to communion in just a moment. We're going to give you an opportunity to, uh, Jonathan and Laurel are going to lead us in a prayer um, as we think of inviting our neighbors uh, to next week to Easter. So we're going to pray first and then we'll, then, then Milton will lead, lead us in communion. Good morning, church. Um, real quick, just want to let you guys know, um, because of the work you've done inviting people to Alpha, uh, Alpha is going great. Um, lives are being changed. People are being touched. People are learning about the Lord, about the Holy Spirit, and 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 are learning what it looks like to be loved on by people that really care. Um, and so we want to continue that momentum um, by inviting you guys uh, to grab these cards that are in the bulletins and invite people to Easter this coming Sunday. Um, some of you have probably invited people in the past, and they said, yeah, I'll go, I'll go, and, and then they never show up. Um, but the good news is a lot of people will come to church on Easter that won't come on other Sundays. Um, so we invite you into that. Um, I, I even ask you to turn it up a notch and show some more hospitality. Invite them to Easter church and maybe even to lunch afterwards. Um, but guys, you don't know who the Lord is working on. You don't know whose heart he's stirring. That, gosh, I need to get back to church. Gosh, there's something I'm missing. So just encourage you guys grab a card, or if you don't want the card, just just send a text, invite somebody, reach out, and you'd be surprised who the Lord's working on. All right. Will you guys pray with me? Father, some of us already have somebody in mind, um, and some of us really aren't sure if we'll have the opportunity to do that this week. Maybe there's nobody obvious. Jesus, you are good news. To those of us who know you, you are better in every way. We are unashamed of inviting people to know you. Lord, I pray boldness over everyone in this room. The desire to take a risk, I pray for a moment that you would set up this week that we can just have a conversation with someone who does not know you open a door to talk about you Lord that you would bring them into your body there are holes of people we're waiting to fill here so that we can fully reflect you as a church God we just pray that people would know you that you are good and you are better and you are holy 
and you are the one who makes our life sufficient and abundant. Lord, so we pray that you would do a great work this week um, and that we would see many, not just for Easter, but for eternity. Just come home. Thank you. You're so good. Good morning, church. Let's go before the table of the Lord. For those of you that are in Christ uh, and know his precious gift of salvation through grace, by faith, uh, this is a time we come because Jesus asked us to remember. If you're not in Christ, we encourage you not to participate um, in this sacrament, but to reflect and consider what's happening, um, and we'll just pray that God will show himself to you. So let's go to the table of the Lord. Father God, we love you so much, and we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, what you did on the cross for us that bridged that chasm um, between us and you in our sinfulness, Lord, that by your body and your blood, we were fully atoned, redeemed by your blood. And because of that, we are called children of God, and we are heirs to the kingdom. And your Holy Spirit seals us to eternity. And the fruit of that spirit is love and joy, peace and patience, goodness and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control, Lord. Lord, if we seek after you, we just pray that those fruits would be evident in our lives, that we might be useful for you in the kingdom, that we might show others your love through our love for them. So I go to the scriptures as we receive the elements in 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I have received from the Lord what I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this, is, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we thank you for every good gift, but most of all, we just humbly tell you we love you and we thank you for the grace you've poured out upon us. Let us take that and be a light to the world that those who are in darkness might come into the light those who are dead in sin might be alive in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I don't. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. We're going to just jump straight in. We already had our greeting time. If you're a first through fifth grader who's normally at Kids Breakout, wave your hand at me. Normally at Kids Breakout, I see you guys. 
you're here for a reason. I'll be speaking to you too this morning. If you don't have, there's an extra handout that was in the lobby for you. So parents, if you didn't grab that, it has a fill in the blank, some things for them to follow along. You can just step out right now and grab one of those. It'd be great. Um, I just want to double up on a few of the announcements uh, and make sure you look at your bulletin. So for the ladies, the women's retreat is coming up this next month in April. Um, please register for that. It's a great time of connecting and being poured into. If you are a visitor uh, or new with the church, then just want to let you know that there's going to be a lunch immediately follow, uh, so the week after Easter. So we just want to let you know about that. We'll have a lunch that'll be immediately following the service the week after Easter. So if you in- invite, for all of you here, if you invite friends, neighbors, somebody comes with you Easter next week, that might be an also another time to encourage them to come the following week, stay afterwards for lunch with us. Um, we are continuing our series talking about building up. And uh, another place that we find this phrase is in Ephesians chapter 4. And since we've kind of moved around and the service is a little bit, uh, it's, it's been a little bit out of order of what we normally do, I'd like you guys to stand. Would you stand with me? And I'm going to read Ephesians 4, and then we're going to pray together. Just want to say again to the children who are here, so you're here for a reason. We want you to be included in the time. Uh, something... Uh, We're going to do a part two of this message, but what we were planning on doing at the end of the service was we were going to pray for John and just commission him as an elder of the church, but uh, his daughter got sick, and so he is home taking care of her, and Odessa's working in the children's ministry, and we wanted them both to be able to be here and be together when we were praying for them. So instead of praying for him and commissioning him, we're going to actually take a moment at the end, and we're going to pray for each other. So I just want to give you a heads up on that. We've done that a few different times, but we're going to give you an opportunity to actually pull together in groups and pray for each other. And as God would have it in the schedule, the children are with us today. And so we have an opportunity to pray blessing over them. And as you hear these words, as we think about the gifts being poured out in the church for the sake of the building up of the body of Christ, it's for all of us. It's for Uh, men and women. It's for young and old. It's for those who are mature in the faith and those who are just coming into faith. God's Spirit has been poured out on all flesh, and he, He is calling us to speak the truth in love to each other, that we may be built up and equipped for ministry, that we may reflect Him in the world. And that's what Ephesians 4 talks about. So let's read. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who was over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean? That he also descended into the lower regions of the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by every wave and carried on by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, in fact, let's read this last, these last two verses. Let's read these together, verse 15 and 16. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. It looks like you didn't have that part, did you? It's okay, because you got to hear it from me. Uh, Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness to us. Thank you for this time you've given us to be in your word together. Thank you for the family of God. Would you use this time to build us up in you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can have a seat. 
I've told this story before, um, but when I read through this book, it's a book called uh, Team of Teams by General Stanley McChrystal. So as a general, he was called to serve in um, the Iraqi war, facing Al-Qaeda and different terrorist groups. And he's talking about the challenge and all that he learned about leadership and about people working together and people coming together. And I was just struck by all the different lessons. And it wasn't until reading it through once and then kind of going back through it again slowly that I started to see why it was so compelling to me. And the reason was is it's, it's, it's just a picture of the church. And there's this story that he starts off with in chapter one that's kind of this arresting moment because you're reading through and he's talking about this tactical battle. And so it's a general, uh, you know, in the United States Army, and he's talking about all these different um, people who are moving around the city and are communicating with each other. And you, you get the sense that, that a battle is happening. Something is happening, and you're kind of following along. And then you get to the very end of it, and it talks about a, a car exploding. And it says this, for, it, it has this line. It says, for Al-Qaeda the mission was a success. The whole time you're thinking he's talking about the U.S. Army, and then you realize he's talking about the enemy. These words in Ephesians that are talking about the body of Christ working together, building itself up, as Paul continues to write, he goes on to talk about not wrestling against flesh and blood, against human craftiness and deceitful schemes. He's reminding us that we are in a spiritual battle, that we're in a spiritual war. And what General McChrystal did at the beginning of his book was he, he was jolting the reader into understanding, hey, this is not just talking about us fighting a battle, but there's a, there's a war that is going on that 